you like to introduce yourselves for our viewers and tell them a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm Eddie Gary. Um, I uh, love low riding. I've been low riding since I was probably like 14 years old, 13 years old. And it's just been something that's always been ingrained in me to not keep a car that's customized. Um, I grew up in East LA, uh, grew up cruising Whittier Boulevard. I, I, as I grew up, we moved out here to the Antelope Valley uh, to raise our family and six kids. And uh, that puts a strain on low riding. So uh, raising the kids was more important. And uh, so I had to put cars aside and my desires aside for a while and uh, now we're back in and just having enjoying the scenery um, as as we were growing up uh, you know we didn't have much so uh, we just strive to work hard uh, we ended up uh, able to create a school pure and simple Academy uh, along with Lona we own that and uh, we also started a charities pure and simple charities which we help the community in many different ways uh, you know, and uh, along with that, uh, I do work a re uh, another job, which is up at uh, PPG Aerospace in Mojave, California, and uh, I'm a supervisor up there as well. Uh, Lona, would you Lona. like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Lona uh, Aguirre. I'm here in Antelope Valley, and like my husband said, we are parents of six children, and uh, we do come from a low-income family when we were young. So to have the desire to have lowriders has been a dream for us. Um, it's something we always wanted, but we couldn't afford raising our six children as teen parents. Uh -huh. And we're so grateful that we can be here and with Rebecca and Daniel to talk about our life and to talk about the joy of lowriding. Um, I'm almost 58 years old, and now that my kids are all grown and gone, I, I'm able to do all the fun things we couldn't do as teenagers. So my kids always laugh and say, Mom, you're going backwards. And it's because we're just enjoying life. And like my husband said, we own a school, uh, but we, we struggled through many, many years uh, as teen parents and uh, raising our children where we were low income, standing in lines and asking for help with diapers and food. And, yeah. you know, we, we always wanted to have a lot, but because we didn't have the proper jobs or the proper education, we thought we would never be able to be where we are today. And through God's blessings and things that are going on in our life today, we own a very, very large facility that houses 250 children. And yeah. so we're really grateful to God. He has blessed us. And with that, we're here to enjoy you as you enjoy us. <laughs> what car club are you with as well? We are from um, True Memories Car Club. Yes. My yeah. husband and I. He was first, then I got my car second, so <laughs> now, yes, we are part of that. And, well, you already started a little bit about, you know, your background in low riding. Um, who was your biggest influence? For me, it was my older brother, Robert. Uh, he, he was always, he always had low riders. He had a, I remember when growing up when we were little, I remember watching him with the 55 Bel Air. It was green and white, and I was like, Man, that's a beautiful car. And then he got rid of it. And I was like, wow. And I was like, oh. and he got a 60, uh, 63 Impala, which was beautiful. And then he got rid of it. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> but not realizing, because I was young, you know, not realizing that, that, you know, he was trying to raise a family. And it was yeah. hard. To, it's hard to do a little right and raise a family at but the same time. But you see that later, though. Yeah, I saw it a lot I later. Saw, and uh, yeah. So I tell him, I go, you know, you gave away a lot of my dream cars. <laughs> he, had a, he, had a, he had a 73 uh, Impala with the big windows. The glass house. The glass house. It was beautiful. I remember it was oh. beige with a light, light tan interior. And I mean, the thing was just gorgeous. And, you know, he got rid of it, too, for the same reasons. And, uh, oh. you know, my heart always loved, I always love cars. I like all kinds of cars. Um, my preference is lowriders. I love bombs, you know, and I love the, the 70s. Um, those, are, those are where my heart's at most of the time. And, uh, but all cars, they all have their beauty, their, their mm -hmm. structure. And, uh, you know, I appreciate all cars. Well, you guys got some beautiful cars. Thank Would you, you guys like to say what cars you have? Well, I got a 48 Fleet Master. It still has the stock uh, suspension. I'm working on uh, airbagging it here for the next year. 
Um, I have custom paint. It's a uh, bronze and uh, a white pearl with uh, ice flake in it. Um, it so it'll pop in the sunlight real nice. You know, we got to the interior and I try to stay as traditional as I could with the four inch pleats across the, the seats. But I actually put some vinyl in there to kind of dress it up, but give it a little more new school feel. So I got some vinyl in there and covered it all nice. Uh, you know, I hid the radio. So, you know, mm -hmm. when you look at the dash, the dash is not cut up. It, it's got a couple of buttons on there that are new, but. radio is actually hidden and it's still got the old 235 in there with the three speed on the tree and you know I just love just putt putting you know I mean for me that's a cruiser you know I, I don't want to race I don't want to speed I just want that that rap that Relax. comes from the from yeah. the backfire on that thing and it's just <laughs> loud and it sometimes it's a little obnoxious and that's what I love <laughs> Cosme's airbrush he came in and he was looking and he's like I we wanted a mural on the on the rear deck lid and so he put a beautiful mural that we wanted of Aslan with uh, Rasa Unida on the bottom and the reason for that is because that's the the 70s that's what reminds me of Lowrider it's about us as a community coming together mm -hmm. and just enjoying our heritage you know mm -hmm. and then in the front he put he told me that you can't go to the back if you don't do the front so mm -hmm. He hooked up my, my visor and he goes, what are we going to put up there? And I go, well, I go, I got my queen that rides with me. I go, so I want a nasty queen on her side. And we put the pyramid in the middle and on the far side was a nasty warrior king. Uh, because that's who I am. When I'm in my car, that's, that's, that's how it. you feel. That's how I feel. <laughs> that's your chariot. Uh -huh. There you go. That's your chariot. And Lona, who was your biggest influence? My biggest influencer is like my brother Alfred, they call him Rowdy, um, and he had a Capri, and I believe it was like a gold Capri, and I remember back in the day, it was in the 70s, I think it's 76, and um, I would stand near it and just walk around it, and he had so many friends that had lowriders, and they would always come to the house, and I was really young, and all I knew is I just loved them, they were beautiful, I remember the Monte Carlos, that used to come by and it was like very, very unique. Um, those are what, you know, I enjoyed when I was young and my brother brought all that into my household, so. Memories you cherish. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah. And your car, would you like to? Mine is a 51 shoe box and it is a 350 motor. It's 400 transmission, it's chopped, channeled, and it's stretched about five inches. And it's about a cream color. It kind of looks like a 50-50 bar. It's like a cream and an orange, and it has a lot of flake. Crazy uh, Pete has is my painter for my my beautiful car. I love my car. Um, and I'm really grateful because my car is um, out for about a year now, painted after we had got it all done. And uh, Cosme Airbrush also put murals on it. And honestly, I am so grateful. We have won so many first places in the Antelope Valley. We won second place in Stockton Super Show, first place in Las Vegas Super Show. It's just like a dream come true for me especially my first year of being um you know out there low riding i'm really grateful it's it's amazing how beautiful my car is and do your cars have names like nicknames mine is la muerta and it's it's to represent 
um, the D Dia de los Muertos. Basically, what we love about that is it's our heritage. It's a reminder of the people that were in our lives that have passed, and it's just a rejoice, a memory of the people that are gone. Amen. Yeah, I call mine Stacy. It's mine has the, has the cream with that with that uh, bronze look, and it looks like an old Stacy Adams shoe. And I remember back in the day, the pachucos going down the street, and they just look sharp, you know, just going down. And I was like, yeah, and this, and that's the way the car looks when it goes down the road to me. When I see that car, every time I look at it, I'm like, man, that's sharp, you know. It's like the way it's supposed to be. Yep. We're supposed to be clean and just, you know, right on point. So. And you know what, guys? If you were to see this beautiful home that they have here, you will see they're living the culture. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all around us. <laughs> Maybe we'll take some clips of, you know, some of your artwork Absolutely. around. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Viva la raza. That's, That's what beautiful. it's all about. That's right. Yeah. We have my co-host who's been very quiet in the corner, so I'll let him take over for a little bit. Big happy, Daniel. How you doing, Familia? Big happy right here. So, Ed and Lona, tell me, you guys mentioned you guys have a school. What made you guys start the school? Well, um, Lona has always been taking care of kids. Um, she, we couldn't, she couldn't get a regular job. She went to school. She had her. She got her education to be a school teacher for special needs children, but she was never able to really exercise that because we couldn't afford daycare mm -hmm. because we barely made ends meet with what I had, and then to have her work, it just it took too much money for us to have it. So she started taking care of kids in the home. From that, she realized that she could actually not just babysit, but actually teach kids. So she started teaching kids, and then she started grabbing kids that were of special needs and bringing them into the home because a lot of times they had a hard time finding good care for kids with special needs. So she started with that. Um, she kept doing that for quite a long time, almost 20 years. And one day I just told her, I go, you know, what you do is just phenomenal because we started having some of the kids that had come through the daycare or through our care um, at the home, they started bringing their children. So not only did they care, did we care for them, but now we're caring for their children. I'm so and, that long. Yeah. It's been 36 years. 36 years now. Wow. wow. Yeah. So I told her, uh, I go, you know, what you need to do, it needs to do with as many children as you could possibly reach. Because, you know, these kids, they, they know that they're, they're getting an education while they're with us. They're getting new skills. Um, they're learning to interact with kids with special needs. And in this world, we need people who are going to be accepting of others that are different, you know. And so, you know, it, it helps them understand that and helps uh, the kids work through that. So I told her she needed to get into a school. And uh, all of a sudden, the, the opportunity just grabbed at us. And uh, so we, we, we went looking for a building. We grabbed money. We got some in, a couple of investors. And... Uh, we went just head on at it, and here we are now, two years into the business, and we've had our, our third expansion, and with 200 plus children now that we're able to care for, it, it's been amazing. And just to watch the children, the, they're all growing, they're all working together, and they have a lot of compassion for the, their fellow friends in the, in the care that are special needs. And so you can see them help them along at times, and you can see them be more patient with them at times, and that's great. That's awesome. you know, like I, you know, he said we've been doing it for about 36 years, and um, it's a mainstream school. Basically, we mainstream children with special needs, autism, Asperger's, Down syndrome, and we bring them into a regular environment, and we mix the class so that they can get treated equally with everyone around them. And the kids love to take care of the children. The kids love to take care of the little ones that are, don't understand, are nonverbal. So we're really grateful because um, the school has expanded so much. I have like 26 teachers. We have three directors. 
Um, our school has just expanded here in Antelope Valley um, in Lancaster, California. And uh, we're, we're able to help a lot of families to become teachers. We guide a lot of the men and women that have come for jobs and helped them and taught them how to get involved in school, go back to college, yeah. and we encourage them, we pay for their school so that they can go to class um, and encourage them to be great teachers. And that's one of the things that Ed and I, uh, we were able to do a lot as, like I said, we had six children. So we were always broke, couldn't afford daycare. And so that's why we, we just figured, let me just take care of my own children at home. Even though I went to college, I went to East LA College, Cal State LA. Um, I went to uh, a lot of colleges out in LA. So just to get my education where I wanted, but because of the, having my own children, it was just too hard for me. And um, like I said, it's uh, an awesome school. And a lot of these um, women and men that work for us are just so encouraged that they're able to go back to school. Ed and I will pay for their classes as long as they pass their class. And then we encourage them to do other things to be better than what they are. It's all about helping the community, and that's what we do here at Pure and Simple. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so it's the, uh, for Pure and Simple, you don't have to have a special needs. You, you can just have... Yep, it's just any child that needs um, child care. We have from 0 to 12 years of age. We do homeschool as well. So we actually, chill up, especially right now with COVID, parents don't want their children at school. So what we do is we have the children come full time at our school. They bring their packets or if they have Chrome, we come and we teach them. We help them get through school while moms and dads are really worried about COVID. We, we have that option for them. And then again, we have infants, toddlers and preschool. And uh, like I said, we are expanding right now. So we have just so many children that are enrolling right now. Um, it's just amazing uh, the things that we can offer for the children. We have children that are in foster care. So we do have social workers that do social worker visits. We have parents that are separated. So we do monitored visits. Um, we also have therapists come in and do speech therapy and mental health with children that need it. So we have a special mm -hmm. therapy room and we also have tutoring that comes in and helps the kids. And then what we do as an extra, Ed and I, is that we offer Taekwondo, tap and ballet for free for these families that come in so that the parents don't have to pay extra money and it's part of the agreement for the children. That's amazing. Oh, that is amazing. That's that is an amazing. Wow. All, all around. Yeah, all in one. Not yep, it is all, all in one. <laughs> Earlier you guys mentioned you guys have a charity. What's the name of that charity again? Of uh, Pure and Simple Charities. Hey. And it's through the charities that a lot of the extras are able to be done because we get donations into the charities and we're able to funnel it back into the children. Um, but we also like to go out in the community. Um, you know, we didn't have much grow uh, as we were growing up. We didn't have much as young adults uh, trying to raise our families. So when we see people out on the street and out here in the Antelope Valley, there's a lot of people that are living on the streets. And so our heart goes out to them. And, you know, so we try to help them as much as possible. So, you know, we get uh, different things. Uh, Panera Bread helps us every Tuesday night with uh, whatever they have left over. And then we turn around the next day and we give it out to several families yes. um, so that they could have bread for the week and sweets for the kids because the kids love sweets. So, you know, they get to have the sweets and um, they get all the, the, those donations. We just turn around and just flip them right, out, right, right over to them. Um, but we also have uh, donations from people in the community when people have a special need. Uh, we've had people who lost their homes because of fires um, and they were moved, they're, they're trying to find and situate themselves. They had three kids and so we put out uh, to all of our volunteers if they had anything that was extra that they could give away. We ended up furnishing their whole apartment yep. wow. with clothing included, pots, pans, food. Wow. We were able to help them that way through the charities and through our contacts. And um, that's what we want to do. We just want to be um, a mediator for the need and the, the, the place mm -hmm. of where we have the surplus. And so we're kind of the intermediary that just wants to be out there and, and just providing for those who, who don't know where to go to get it. And, um, so we get phone calls often. Um, you know, we don't like the phone calls, but we appreciate the fact that God has put us in a position to be able to serve, to serve our community.
And with that, um, a lot of times that we, even ourselves, because of what we went through, um, as well as, you know, poverty in our life, we didn't have the best for our kids. So when we were young, having the hand-me-downs that people would give us clothes, they would give us clothes that were their used clothes, but we were so excited. Our kids had nice clothing so to you know go to school. Oh my gosh. So it was like new shoes, it was mm -hmm. new clothes. And even though they were used, to us it was new. And so I remember those memories and it just makes me like so joyful when other people do that and we can help the community with that. Uh, we have, like he said, a lot of donations that come in. We have stacks of food, like meat, we have cheese, we have milk, we have, like, we had my whole school full of food this last week, vegetables, yeah. everything. And we give it to all the daycare parents to make sure that they have food in their fridge, you know, for their children. Then we start making phone calls to people in the community, Aaron. Um, Aaron Valencia with uh, Lost Angels. He's another uh, yep. person in the community that's really out there looking out for others. Yep. Um, his program is amazing. He's, he's trying to work with uh, at-risk youth. Um, he's someone that you guys would definitely love. To yes, to. definitely. And uh, you know, so he 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 works uh, he works with us uh, sometimes, and um, we try to make sure that he's always provided. Uh, he's able to provide for the people that he has as well, wow. um, because what he does is just extremely important to this community as well. And then what we do with him is we like we'll have lots of food, so we'll call Aaron and we'll have diapers that we give out to the kids in the community. So we have a diaper drive-through, and then when we have extra, we call them, and then we'll say, "Come by, pick up all the donations, and let's give it to the next set of families that we don't know." Oh, so we we it's like a big turnaround. We always help each other, yeah. and um, but like I said, it's just one of those things that we're grateful for the things that we got for free in our life, and now God's blessed us, and now we're able to give to others, yeah. and because of poverty. We're where we're at today, you know, we strived and there's hope. And a lot of times people think there is no hope that, oh, I, they don't understand, you know, people see us with our nice cars and, oh yeah, they don't understand, you know, we can't be there ever. You know, we're not like that. We've been there. We've done it. We were, we were poor. We were striving, but God did not let us fail and we had hope. And that's exactly what you guys got to look forward to. Yeah. If you're struggling right now, if you think I can never own a lowrider or ever be there, it's not true. You got to strive and say you're going to do it. You guys are a great example of it. And you guys continue to give back to those that are struggling and showing them the way of like, hey, it can change. Oh, yeah. So especially through all of your work and your charity. So yeah. that's great. Thank you. That's great. That's a huge, huge thing <laughs> in the community. Yep. And so, for you guys, where did it all begin? Like, we're in going back in your low riding days, we we said who influenced you, but where did it all begin? Where did you first into the culture? Were you just born into it? Did you gradually make your way into it? How did it start for both of you? Honestly, I think I was born into it. Uh, my brother was already owning lowriders, bringing them around, um, already customizing, um, you know, and I just loved the beauty of the cars. And then he would pick us up because he was already married at that time, but he would pick me and my, my other brother up and he would take us to go buy eight track tapes back then. <laughs> and so we would go to the store with him and we'd cruise down the boulevard, we'd go up to up Atlantic Boulevard and go all the way into Monterey Park and there was a little record store up there where the waterfalls are. And uh, he would pull over and we'd go in with him. He'd buy a couple of eight tracks and <laughs> pop them in the deck and he'd start bumping some music and we'd start going down back down <laughs> Atlantic Boulevard all the way down to Whittier, go up Whittier, <laughs> come back down Olympic, yeah. you know. And, uh, oh <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, and that was just how we grew, you know. And so as I got older, we had friends that had cars and so we'd jump in the back seat and get out there and as much as we could on Sundays and just enjoy the boulevard and uh, enjoy the other cars and always looking at the ones I wanted, you know, like, oh, I want that one. Oh, man, that was <laughs> sweet, you know? But I, and I was always looking at the bombs. They were always so fresh and clean, you know? And I'm like, man, I, one day I got to own me a bomb. One day, know, one, one day. day. One day, one day. Now, now's the day and, That's you know, I, I, I love my bomb. I, I love the, you know, I just, 
it's everything I, I, I remembered that I thought it would be. And it's just like that. And That's so, great. yeah, being born, I think I was born into it. And, uh, you know, just the culture all around me was always there. I bet you wake up, you go to your garage, and like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, my, extra, my spare time is spent just going to the garage, and I have a table and chairs in there where I just sit, and uh, sometimes I'll just be looking at, at my, my YouTubes and stuff like uh, that, but I'm actually staring at the car the corner of the house, <laughs> you know, and just thinking about what's next. He's what are checking we out Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I think I was born into it as well. Just the family, um, you know, family and cousins that had them, you know, that the cars. But I think as I got older, it, it didn't phase me as much until um, one of my great friends had invited us to a True Memories car club meeting. And they said, oh, we're in a car club. And we're like, really? Okay. You know, we didn't have a car, but we went to all the meetings with them and yeah. we decided, you know what? Aww. Um, I think we will try to get a car and then we started getting cars and we got one and then we got two and then we got a third and now we're like it's like shopaholics but we're just shopaholics for cars now yeah. so bottom line is uh, yeah we I think I was born into it but now as an adult older like I say older but I believe that um, I, I I'm in love with doing it I love hanging out with all my friends that have cars um, I love going cruising. I love the car shows. I love meeting all the different car club members. There's so many people we know, and it's so funny. You could be driving, and just everybody knows each other, you know, and it's a family. It's a, a community. Family. It's a family. It's not like, oh, you're better than you, you're better than that. It's, it's just a family environment. And so I'm really, I'm really thankful for that. That's very true, very true. Yeah. But I want to change something to what you said about older. It's not older anymore. I say wiser. Wiser, I like uh, that. Older's not a good word. I like being old, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look forward to getting old. And you know what? It's funny because people see us and they're like, man, they're older and they have a car. But yeah, we do. And you know, the one thing that I do... Um, think about is when we are driving our vehicles, it's funny how some people that don't know you at all judge you. Yeah. And we do get judged, you know, by the cars we drive and the, you know, um, who we are, Hispanics. And I've seen the looks like, oh, like disgust. But we've been there, done that, and we just kind of laugh and just say, you're so ignorant. But I think that, um, it's awesome because knowing that who we are, we're, we're a godly family. My husband and I love the Lord. He's our number one. And nobody knows that just because we drive the car. And then they have no clue we own a school that houses 200 and something kids. Yeah. And we have almost 25 to 30 <laughs> employees. And by judging us, they have no clue. And that's the funny thing about it. Is they nobody knows you until they meet you. They're judging and, the book by the cover, and, and exactly. you know what? Have fun to give them, you know, what a it's really about, uh, really about exactly to yeah. show them what the truth is. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Have fun while doing it. <laughs> oh yeah. And everyone we've ever met out, out, you know, when we're out and cruising and just hanging out and enjoying the cars is. Every, almost everybody's a, a business owner of some sort. Yeah. You know, they're professionals in some level. Yeah. And so, you know, that stigma that came from way back in the day is just totally washed away, but people don't recognize that. And, I think you know, they don't recognize the fact that these parts are not cheap. Yes. <laughs> right. You know, oh, yeah, they're not, even the bike parts, they're not cheap. Not cheap. You know, we know that from yeah. experience. It takes time. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't think they realize that. They think that there's a certain stereotype Absolutely. to the culture. And that's another reason why we started this channel and trying to give a voice back to low riding. And that way, a lot of the viewers can get to know who you are as a person, of uh, where each person, their story, and where they came from. And you guys are an, a great example to all of that. I mean, so thank you guys for oh, thank you. <laughs> Honestly, I would say, if you have a motor, four wheels, you're part of a big, huge automotive family. Yeah. Even not even four wheels. Like, for instance, Brother Edgar. 
<laughs> has a Harley Davidson. Would you like to elaborate on your, on your Harley Davidson? Oh yeah, man, I love my Vicla. <laughs> so, you hear that? She's beautiful, man. I call her Amber Whiskey. Oh, yeah. Amber oh, Whiskey. To Amber. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's oh, the yeah. ladies man. <laughs> what can I say? I mean, you know, when you got something beautiful, you, it, to me, you know, it's like my wife. You know, it's a she's Aww. they're female. <laughs> so. She's she's great. She's a great bike. Um, you know, she's it's, uh, it's an ultra limited uh, 2014. Um, I got some nice big fat daddy spokes on there. There, she's uh, and she's a uh, amber whiskey color with black. Um, I got the big 21 in the front, 18 in the back, uh, all spokes. And I kind of blacked out and uh, some of the motor so that I can have some of that chrome just pop. You know, I want that, that contrast of the black with the chrome. And uh, then I went ahead and uh, I met up with uh, Easy uh, Seats, Easy Seats, and uh, they're out in Santa Fe Springs. And uh, they, they were talking to me about how they can uh, customize my seat. And I'm like, okay, say, let's do it. So they did. They, I left there with, with, a, with, a, with an old bucket seat and uh, uh, left my, my seat there. And, uh, when I came back a few weeks later, I mean, I had alligator across the middle in a nice, uh, almost a, like a reddish, uh, reddish brown color that matched the, the copper the, the, or the amber on the bike. And then on the side, he put uh, the uh, ostrich. He put ostrich on the side and he used that, that Harley orange stitching on it. Oh. But he did the seat, he did the backrest because I have the queen seat for my queen. Oh. And it's got the speaker pods there so that while we're driving down and we're going out, like maybe we'll go to like the, the bike rally up in uh, Laughlin and uh, someone likes to fall asleep. <laughs> we won't say who. Bike? Oh, I could, I could sleep for hours. Yeah. I would be so and so scared. I'll be rolling down the road. You know, I got me some nice little mini apes right there. And I'll be rolling down the road, you know, listening to some nice tunes. Um, upgraded the sound system on that thing. Uh, I'm planning to upgrade again. Uh, right now I have uh, four six and a halfs. I'm actually going to add four six by nines to it uh by the end of the year and uh so we'll see what what it sounds like then <laughs> oh, that's great that's good not not only does ed have his beat club lona has her bike also right yes you want to tell me about my bike uh, <laughs> her, her michigawi i guess i'm probably saying that wrong uh frame uh it's a 26 inch beach cruiser style stretch and then uh this stretch was actually uh modified we took that stretched frame and then what we did is we actually raised up the, 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 the crank pedal so it could actually be ridden. So it's, it's one of those uh, bikes that's not just looks low, but it's actually riding. It's, it, it can be ridden. Um, it's a tangerine orange candy. Um, I actually painted that frame myself. Um, and then really? Cosme's airbrush came back and uh, he, uh, he did some nice murals on there mm -hmm. to bring out that La Muerta style yeah. that Lona has and yes. he took her seat and put the La Muerta on there as well. Um, you know, we customized some uh, the hand grips so that they're, they're actually, I actually, ta uh, I dyed those tangerine, uh, candy tangerine. Uh, I took a white handle grip and I just uh, fixed it up and I made it uh, candy tangerine. Uh, we just lowered it a little more, put a chrome, and she's got chrome twist all over the place on that thing. Amazing. And it matches perfectly with your car. I know, yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, I yeah. love it. It's that so stretch is actually eight feet long. That bike is eight feet long. And that's longer than me for me to keep in mind. I'm six foot three. <laughs> 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 yeah, that is an eight foot long bike. Have you driven it? Have you rode it? Girl, no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm afraid. I'm afraid. It's just for looks. I love it. I mean, it's rideable. So, I mean, I thought of maybe having someone ride it for a parade or something like that, but. You know, it's so pretty. I don't want to ruin it. It's so yeah, pretty. Yeah, it's know? a long stretch. Yeah, yeah it is very yeah. long. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Lona, do you have a name for this bike? Oh. You never thought of that? I never oh, well, thought since of a name. I was thinking. Oh, oh this is my head. <laughs> since the car is La Muerta. La Hermana de La Muerta. 
La hermana de la muerta, míralo. Yeah. Oh. Right. She called la hermana. That's la hermanita. <laughs> and then you have the little pedal car also, the we twin. We also have a pedal car that's the twin to my, my 51 shoebox. It is identical, paint, everything from, uh, again, Crazy Pete. So he did that for me. So uh, all of it has been, if you see the Lowrider show um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, you go on YouTube, you'll see it, and you'll see the whole setup with my bike, my, my pedal car, my vehicle. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah, we do have um, a, dis uh, a visual display that we have. We, we created a poster display where, where we put all of the, the vendors that have helped us with build the car. Yeah. And so that you know people can see that, I mean, even though it's our car, you know, these cars can, can be built by a single person, but for many of us, you know, some of our talents it can only go so far. And so we got to bring in people who have talents in different areas. And it brings in uh, the community, you know, and mm -hmm. so we're able to, to grab onto some new friendships, you know, get to know new people. And uh, we appreciate the work they've done. And so we want to re have them recognized on a board when we put our display out and so we have these nice uh, poster boards that show the before and the afters mm -hmm. of some of the work that was done and we want to make sure that we recognize those people uh, right. for the work they've done on the car mechanically mm -hmm. paint um, you know the murals the even the, even our car club you know i mean if it wasn't for the car club uh they for pushing us in, in a sense by allowing us to be out on the street and enjoying the community um that inspired us to want to just keep building and doing something new each time we went out we wanted we would see a car with something on there with some engraving and so we'd go off and try and see what we can get engraved you know um, <laughs> we've got etchings on the windows you know we did uh, different things just so that uh, because we saw it on a car and we liked it and we're saying wow it looked good on ours as well everybody inspires yeah. each yeah. other and that's the best part that's the best part of the lowrider culture yeah. you don't try to beat the other person you just get inspired by others yes all right Absolutely. and it yeah. continues to grow where you stretch your dream you know it, it's in your mind as a visual but little by little all those additions add up and it changes, you know, yeah. the way that it actually comes along, and that's great. How long did it take for you guys, if you don't mind me asking, to build oh, wow. your cars up to where it is now? Uh, mine's is still a work in progress. There are still things that I'm modifying, that I'm updating now, mm -hmm. um, especially in the powertrain area and the undercarriage. Um, so for me, I'm still in, in that process of uh, making it exactly the way I want it. So, you know, I have the original uh, suspension underneath, mm -hmm. the original drivetrain, and I'm looking to upgrade that to be able to get better freeway mi miles, get some radial tires on there to get some, some nice gas mileage out of it. And so, you know, just trying to change up the, the power structure a little bit. Um, but for me, I've had my car now two years, three years? Two years. No, isn't it longer? Two, three years. years. Yeah, it's been about two, three years now yeah. since I've owned my vehicle. Um, purchased, it, purchased it from a club member. He's like, yeah, because my first car was a 53 uh, Plymouth uh, Belvedere. Mm -hmm. And it was in my garage, and I was building it. And um, I had the interior done. I had the, all, the, all the subframe was all done. Um, the drivetrain was getting worked on. And then when I got the motor done, it came back, and the, the, the engine builder did not do a great job. Uh -oh. So now I was at a point where I either had to put in a new motor and I had to figure out if I wanted to put in a, a V8 or did I want to put a standard. And so there's so many things that go into your thought process. Yep. When you're looking at a lowrider, there's so many options that you got and you want to do what's right for you. And so I was just going crazy. And then, of course, I was looking at cost because everything costs money. And it, no matter where I looked, I, I just kept throwing money at this car and it wasn't going to get on the road. So I ended up, uh, one of the brothers in the club, he says, look, I got this 48 Fleetmaster. I'm like, yeah, I love the Fleetmasters. <laughs> and 48, I'm like, it's right there, right in my ears. You know, I like those old, the, the old bombs. I'm like, yeah. So we picked it up from him and, uh, you know, he let me do some payments on it, you know, so I can get it on the road and drive around and cruise. And it was just great, you know, being out That's again. Cool. 
and uh, yeah, and then we just started fixing it up from there. Um, yeah, so we're very appreciative of, uh, of that. And uh, so we're still working on it, but it took about, to, for where it's at right now, and it's still a work in progress, it's uh, about two and a half, three years. Uh, Lola's on the other hand. About a year and a half, I believe I had wow. it. Wow. Yeah. And it took us about almost a year to get it where I want it. Um, it was a little at a time, and um, I think the only thing I want to change in it right now is putting a new, uh, you know, airbags or, you know, a new airbag system. Um, but otherwise, I'm happy with it the way it is. Um, I think that I already just, just finished the interior. Um, we just finished the back end. Um, we also painted the, uh, what is that, the air, what is it called, the air machine? Uh, your air tank. Tank, okay. yes. We, my yeah. father passed in October, so and I, I just wanted to make, thank you, I wanted to make a memory of for myself, and we painted my dad on the air tank. Aww. So, um, yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, Fred, her dad, he loved he loved old cars. He loved low riders, uh, you know. And and so when we got hers, he was really excited. He was like, "Wow!" And so Lana took him for a cruise, and he was like, "Hey, go down here because my friends are over here. Go down here because my friends are over here." He's a senior, so he was like, "I picked him up at the senior center, um, you know, apartments." And he's like, "Go down the market to the market down here and." Turn right here, and it was like in front of a market. He wanted me to cruise, and I'm like, okay, dad. So I cruised down near the market where all his little old friends are, and lowered my car, and oh, he was so excited. Oh my gosh, just a great man. We wanted to make a tribute to him, and so we put his face on her air tank, made sure that he's always with her when she's out there on the road, you know. That's real good. That's real good. Um, to another people that we have interviewed, not being besides you two, be everything else, you say you dedicated your car to your father, right? Would you say, now that you're writing, his presence is still with you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He's, even without my car, he's present. But with my car, I feel like my daddy's right there. We're all crying. <laughs> it's all love, though. That's what it is. Yeah. The low-rank culture is a bunch of emotions. Yeah. The great, the good, the bad, the happy, and the sad. Yeah. So, is there a reason why you painted your cars that certain color? <laughs> um, mine again. Um, it, it's always been in my thought that the car looked stylish. And so it needed style. And the only thing that meant, that said style to me was a Stacey Adam. Mm -hmm. And so when I started, I just Googled Stacey Adam because I knew the picture I had of a Stacey Adam in my head. And I, and I needed a picture to show the colors that I wanted. So I went online and I actually found a picture of the Stacey Adams yeah. that, I, that I liked. And I blew it up. And I took that picture with me and I said, I want my car to look like this. I want <laughs> white, creamy. Uh, you know in the middle and then I want this bronze on the outside like a brownish bronze on the outside and then uh, Crazy Pete he's like you know he goes you know we'll make it pop he goes if we put some flake in that and that and so put a layer of flake and just make it pop it'll pop in the sunlight I'm like let's do this you know I mean because it's it's not an original color the car um, as, as original as I try to keep it it's not all original so uh, I just want to be able to have that perception of, of originality but I know that I'm going to have a lot of custom and modifications that are updated and so you know when I when he started talking to me about it I'm like yeah that's exactly what I want I want it to stand out so that when people see me going down the road especially young kids you know I want them to be inspired of the art and the desire to want to do something different you know, the, not to just keep a car as the same old, same old, but actually see it and say, you know, I want to do something a little different. I like this, and I want it to look like that, and be proud of what it is. You know, and that's, that's the culture. It's like, you know, the car is part of you, and, and I'm part of my culture, and that kind of all comes out in the artwork that's there. It's not just mechanics. It's art. It's a piece of art going down the street for me. That's true. That's true. And mine, um, when I first bought the car, it was all black, black. But the engine area 
was like a tangerine orange and it was so pretty on black. And I said, I want to keep the orange. And then inside the dash is all tangerine orange. So I was like, I love this color. Mm -hmm. And so I told Crazy Pete, I said, I want it orange. I don't care what you do to it. I just want orange and some cream, you know, and whatever you want to do with it. It's your car to do whatever you want to do. I just want orange. So when he said, I could do whatever I want, I said, do whatever you want, as long as it's a chick car, not my husband's car. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so when he did it and all the sparkles and diamonds and everything that looks so nice in it, and then I even got a diamond shifter so Ed won't drive it. So everything is girly, girly, girly. Aww. Yeah, so I love my car. I love the color. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing about the cars is that both cars have the same white. Yeah. We, we use the same base white for both our cars because we wanted it to be the same. You know, we're a couple. We're together. We're, we're in this together. And so we have the same white. The only thing is that she has gold flake that comes out in hers that gives hers a different color in the sun. And mine has a copper flake in it. To brings out more of it accents my my bronze a little more but it also brings out the color in my car a little more but it's actually the same base white on, on both our cars so you know we, we wanted to do that because we wanted to be one still we're one. Aww, that's so we've been cute. married 37 years so yes. we're still one been together yes. since sixth grade 1976 Aww. yes and they recently had their anniversary party that's good, together as one. That's what I'm hearing when you say both same white, together as one. Yep. Cruising the same same roads, yep. same. Oh yeah, yeah. We were cruising down Lancaster Boulevard on uh, Valentine's Day, and we had her, her car just came out with the paint, and so we're cruising, and there it was a cruise night, so the one of the clubs uh, was out there, and they were giving out uh, roses, and so I pull up, and I'm by myself. And he looks at it, he comes in, he goes, hey, Bato, what's up, man? He goes, where's your old lady? I go, man, she's back there. She got her own ride, you know? Aww. She, she you wanted go. a cruise, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, she, you know, so then I had to pull up, and then Lona came in, and she got her rose, you know? But, but yeah, we're, we're, we're going to cruise out there. We want to, you know, people to see the cars, both of them. And, uh, you know, we don't mind being separated for a little while because yeah. when we park, we're together. Yep. There you go. There you go. And you were telling the story about your super show story, oh, right? My How goodness. you got there? Yes, it was. Um, we 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 knew it was booked, uh, the Las Vegas super show, and it was like we were like, oh man, I wish we could go. Yes, twenty twenty one, and we were so like, okay, well, I guess we're not going, but it's okay. And then I get a phone call on a Thursday, and the super show was that Saturday, and it was crazy. Pete, and he says, hey, he goes. Two people backed out. Do you want to go? And I'm like, you got to be kidding. And I looked at Ed, and he, we were driving through a drive through at the time. And I'm like, Ed, can we go? And he's like, no, no. <laughs> I got to get the cars ready. I got to wash the cars. I got to get a trailer. We got to do this. We got to, please, let's go, please. And he goes, I go, Pete, I'll call you right back. Let me talk to Ed. And so I get off the phone, and I'm like, Ed, I'll do whatever it takes. Let's go, please. And so he said, all right. And oh, my gosh, within that second, I made like 10 phone calls, got trailers, got everything we needed, got a hotel, got people washing our car, detailing our car. You name it. We had it done. We had people driving with us that miss work just to go with us to help us. I mean, it was just like one, two, three, go. And then Ed ended up getting up there on Friday. Um, huge line. How many hours were you in line? Seven hours? Eight hours? It's about eight Whoa. hours, yeah. Wow. Eight we hours. one of the last ones into the show. Uh-huh. Yeah, eight literally. hours and in line. Guys. Yes. And he was there. He was so excited. I was excited. And then when I showed up and I walked into the place, on Saturday morning, my heart fell. I seen so many amazing, beautiful cars. I said, why am I here? I, I'm not even close to being as beautiful as all these cars. They're so gorgeous. They're 
Oh my gosh, I was so intimidated. I was like, I, I can't even look at them. I was so scared because I said, this is too, too good to be true. These cars are gorgeous. As I walked to my car, I sat in the corner as you sit, and you get to sit along the side to watch people watch your car. And I'm sitting there on Saturday, and I'm shaking because I'm like, my car isn't as beautiful as everybody else's. And then people start coming, and it was like, they just gravitated to my car. So many people, I couldn't even see my car. People were standing around and taking tons of pictures. And I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh, look at all these people, Ed. Look at they're looking at our car, you know? And in the end of everything, I'm sitting there in the end, just happy to be there. And when they started calling all the awards and they came to a category for my car, there was not a second place or a third place. It was just first and it was my car. Wow. And I'm like, what about the other categories? It was like first place. And I could not believe my ears. And I just sat there and I didn't know what to do. And they called our, our name and I got up and I was so shocked and so excited. And I'm like, but I'm looking at everybody else and all the clubs around me saying, but you guys deserved it more, you know? Aww. I was just so overwhelmed and joyful. It was just a great feeling that you, I'm sure some of you that want out there know the feeling. But I'm really, really thankful to Crazy Pete for allowing us to have that opportunity to experience that. It was an experience I'll never forget. Did you have to pinch her? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, get up, up there! Now. Come on! <laughs> Even now, yeah. <laughs> when she goes Absolutely. and looks at her little trophy shelf and, you know, looks at So that was your first Super Show award. That was my second Super Show. The first okay. one was in Stockton. Oh. And that was also another one that we just, this was our first time going to Stockton. And we were like, what do we do? How do we do this? We have yeah. no clue what we're doing. And they even put us inside a main auditorium. Everybody was out in the open and they put my car in the main auditorium and Ed's wow. car in the main auditorium. And we were just kind of like, oh, wow, okay. And the guy's like, you're lucky. Only nice cars go in the auditorium. Aww. I'm like, thank you, I think. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, begin their journey in low riding. Right. But what's next for you guys? Are the you Phoenix Super Show. We're taking both our cars to the Phoenix Super Show on March the 26th. It's in Glendale, Arizona. And uh, we are traveling up there. We're excited. We're nervous again. It's another Super Show that, you know, you get a little intimidated. But um, we're looking forward to it. We're excited about it. Well, we yeah. hope you win, and Thank you. we'll be watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. And so that's next for the Super Shows. Uh, for us, we're, we've been thinking about a convertible. So we've been looking yeah. at thinking uh, we want something that's an older convertible, uh, a bomb. And we're thinking, you know, because we want something where we can take it out into a parade. We yes. want a parade style oh, car that we can take out and enjoy, enjoy it, it uh, cruise in it, and uh, maybe have, you know, enjoy some parades. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. We recently just had a parade. My arm still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the turning fun. and but the switching. You, yeah. And, yeah. But you know what? Back to the parade talk. A lot of people say the biggest trophy out there is seeing the smile on those kids' faces when they see oh, your car. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That, that's our joy. I, that's one thing. No matter where I go with my car, and if I see a child standing there looking, I stop wherever I'm at. I don't care if there's cars behind me. Oh. I'll stop and lower my car for them and then pop it right up, and they get so excited. <laughs> I'm all about the kids, and I love it. I get so happy for them. Everywhere we go, it's like Ed already knows, oh, there she goes. She sees a kid. You know, and I do that all the time. All oh, the yeah. time. 
Yeah, we were on Van Nuys Boulevard, and there was a young man. He was sitting. He was standing on the corner, just watching all the cars, like whoa, whoa. And then he sees Lona's, and he's just like, and I, and he's just staring at her, like wow. <laughs> and, and so I go, I hit Lona, and she turned around, she sees him, and as we get right next to him, she looks over, and he's just staring at the car, and he, you just see it, shh, and he's like. <laughs> and then she pops it back Aww. up and he's like <laughs> yeah. and I, I, you could tell it made his night and uh, you know that's part of low writing you know it's the joy of seeing things like that just uh, you know one, 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 you know, even once in your life if you, you can experience mm -hmm. it it's something that stays with you I hope it inspires him to yeah. become an engineer an artist Aww. of some sort, you know, because yeah. exactly. um, that's that's what I'm hoping for is that kids nowadays get inspired to to do great things and be the next level of low writing. Yep, exactly. And you guys give a lot of different charity events and everything like that. Do you have anything coming up that you're doing or doing for the community that you want to tell everybody about? Well, we actually are doing something on March 5th. Um, it's Palmdale Little League. It's um, a nonprofit. Um, this this little league field is Dominic Masari, and they don't have funding that comes in from the state or um, the city. Um, so basically, they have to fund their own things, their own equipment, their own um, you know lights and everything. So what we're doing is we're doing a car show on March fifth, um, and just have a bunch of people that do pop ups um, come and join us. And then they can pay a fifty dollar fee, and that money goes towards helping the kids and uh, the things that are needed at the at the park level. And um, so we're doing that. If anybody wants to join, um, they can uh, contact us. Um, but we're we're having that. It's a, an amazing event that's going to be for the kids on opening day, so that we could raise money for them. True Memories is sponsoring our. Um, the car show there and we already have other car clubs that want to be involved because they want to help out with the children so we're, we're excited about that it's all about the kids so we also have a interview tomorrow and photo shoot with chingon magazine they're going to be doing la muerta tomorrow in lake la so we're pretty excited about that and they're going to be shooting um early in the morning and so hopefully we'll see it on um, Chingon Magazine very soon in their next edition. We'll be putting some pictures and everything we talked about and went over with you guys on our Instagram and on this video. So, But um, your contact information, so I'll post that as well at the ending of this video for Pure and Simple Academy if you guys want to donate to charities for Pure and Simple or if maybe you know a child that would like to attend or it would benefit them. Um, that would be great. Absolutely. So we'll get that from you guys. And we just like to thank you guys for having us over in your beautiful oh, home thank and you. being able to interview you guys. And we see them all the time. And believe me, we know a lot of the charities that they are talking about and the giving back that they do. And it's just amazing. We commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and honestly, we, we appreciate them that have so many amazing friends out there that watch everything they do. And we appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to speak out yeah. to the community, speak out to the people out there that don't lose hope in your life. Um, you can be there one day, uh, getting your little low riders, starting off, or even your business, or anything that you really, really, really wish to do. Um, you know, don't lose hope. You there's, yeah. there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Push forward, same way, just like our low riders, we always push forward, always try to do something new. It, it, it doesn't matter if you just buy a little uh, a little emblem, you know, a chrome emblem and put it on your car. You know, it's something new and you just move forward. It's the same way in life. Yep. You gotta take That's some true. steps Very just to true. move forward, so. That's it. It's like, it's like a classic car. You cruise, you break down, you fix it, you do it all over again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. These are our toys. Yeah. <laughs> just remember, as you get older, your toys just get bigger. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Just remember that. <laughs>